his thoughts become things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I am Jeremy Lopez, and I'm always excited when all of you guys and gals decided to join with me in this podcast. I love it every week. I feel like I'm sitting up at a table gathered together with all my friends and family members, and we're just sort of, you know, talking about life, and I love that. I feel that way every time I gather with you guys. I really do. I wanted to talk today about wisdom. You know, sometimes we see the difference between wisdom and presumption, and we hear people talk about everything from hyperfaith to what regular faith is, and then we hear those people who really just don't know the balance of in-between. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I wanted to talk today a little bit about wisdom and a little bit about this whole coronavirus. And I think sometimes, a lot of times, people really don't know exactly what to think when something like this happens. And a lot of times, they'll call it the devil. Think about it. You have. I was reading the other day about some certain minister friends of mine who tend to have this idea that the devil is out to get them, you know, the devil wants to keep us from joining together on Sunday mornings and in fellowship and communion. When really the truth is, hundreds of years, we actually were able to gather together in Sunday morning services. And so and all of a sudden, hundreds of years later, all of a sudden the devil just comes and just wants to throw a virus just so we won't be able to gather together on Sunday morning. And I'm thinking to myself, now think about this for a moment. How crazy does that sound? Because the truth is, folks, you know, if you read in the Bible, they gathered together in homes. So I don't really think it's a big deal to God that you gather to gather in your homes to worship God. I mean, let's get scriptural about it, folks. Come on, there wasn't no cathedrals, there wasn't no, you know, those type of big synagogues when it deals with the things that we see today as if we have to meet on Sunday morning, you know, and we never stop to realize that if the quote-unquote devil is trying to stop us from joining together when it deals with Sunday morning services, then why on earth is he just attacking China? Where it started? You know, through a bat. You know, why did he attack, you know, uh, um, Italy? I mean, we have to begin to really think with wisdom. And I've, I've read an article recently of some um, someone else I know personally that was talking about you know how you know we've got to continue our faith we've got to not be afraid we've got to get into church we've got to get outside and not be afraid to get out in public because God's going to protect us and and here's where I really draw the line okay I'm going to be very honest with all of you here's where I draw the line when we read the scripture okay in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 Proverbs 4, verse 6 and 7, it says, Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom or gain wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Now think about that for a moment. Let's read it again. It says, Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. Verse 6. So let's think about this for a moment, okay? Let's think about the avenue of what wisdom, we call she, is crying out to do. It's basically letting you know if you use wisdom, wisdom will protect you. Correct? So when we sit here and we say, you know what, the devil's after us, we've got to join together anyway, when really the truth is, now is the media telling us not to do this? Yes. Does the media sometimes tend to be very dramatic and overemphasize things? Yes. But here's where we have to understand the facts. The facts are there are thousands in China who have died. The facts are there are thousands in Italy who have died. I mean, we're up into the 3,000 people range, folks. And here's where I look at life. If God so loved the world that He gave, that means He gave His only begotten Son, correct? That means God didn't think of His own self. He thought about some other, someone else and other people, correct? God thought about giving His Son because He loved the world, that He gave His Son. His only begotten Son, the Word of God says. So because of that, God didn't think out of a selfish motive. God thought out of a wisdom motive. God thought out, uh, out of the idea that, you know what, I'm not a, it's not about me. And that's why the Scripture even says to decrease that God can increase in you. And the Scripture reminds us to take up our cross and follow Him daily. To do not deny ourselves. Now when we read about these things, we understand what faith is and we understand what fear is. Fear is the idea of sitting here saying to yourself, you know, I'm, oh my God, I, I, I don't 
don't want to get the virus. I don't want to get the virus. And you feel this anxiety. You know it's fear creeping up on you to where it feels paralyzing to you. There's a big difference between fear and faith. And faith is also colliding with the, the area of wisdom. And faith and wisdom tend to work hand in hand. And wisdom is letting, her, letting us know, I'm the one that's going to protect you. So use wisdom, because I'm the one that's going to protect you. What is wisdom? For example, wisdom is saying when the media says, hey, stay six feet away from each other. Hey, don't gather maybe six or ten people more if you can together. That's wisdom. It's not meaning that the media is trying to just shut you down or destroy your Christianity. The media is not trying to you know, destroy churches from gathering together. They're just telling what they feel and overemphasizing it all, correct? And so here's my idea. What is wrong with us staying inside? You know, I was watching the news last night when it deals with a bunch of young people. And these millennials love them all, but, you know, come on, use some wisdom, guys. Half of them don't even vote, you know. And we think of the, of, of the fact that they're all gathering at the beach, having fun. And I get the fact that, it, no, it's hard. I know it's hard when you're in during spring break and you can't enjoy it. I couldn't imagine, you know, how bad that probably is. When you're, man, I'm out of school, I want to enjoy it. Or maybe I'm going to take a, you know, a... a um, I think one class is going to go to Germany, you know, and that was canceled. And so I get the fact that it, I know it's disappointing. I, I get that completely. But here's where we have to remember things, folks. It's not about us. It's not about you. It's about other people around you. The fact that when we hear of older people, I was watching the news last night where a family of nine, nine of them, three of them died from the virus. Three out of nine. And that's a bad thing, folks, you know? And it's not not a fear factor by far. I don't fear anything. I mean, I really don't. I have faith in God, and I use, I use wisdom. And Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says what? Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Excuse me, the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So faith is the substance of things I'm hoping for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So it's a protective wall around me, but yet wisdom right here tells me, do not forsake wisdom, for she will protect you. And if you love wisdom, she will watch over you. And what this means is wisdom is letting you know there's nothing wrong with having faith and God to say, hey, you know what? You know, I'm not going to get this virus. There's no way I'm going to get this virus. And so I'm not even going to think about it. I'm not going to empower it. I'm not going to put any type of uh, empowerment into it, of even focusing on it. I'm not going to try to dwell on it. I'm going to begin to say, I'm not going to get it, so I'm moving on. I'm moving on with my life. But in the midst of moving on with my life, I want to use wisdom because life is not all about me. It's not all about me, me, me getting it or me, me, me not getting it. It's about the fact that I can actually expose the people that are older or that are younger. Maybe they have low immune systems or maybe have very, uh, you know, bad, um, you know, maybe cardio, uh, I mean, excuse me, uh, like lung issues. And so, you know what? It's not about me. And if God made it plain in His Word that God saw the world that He gave, it did, God didn't make it about Himself. He made it about other people. So wisdom says that, that she will protect you. And wisdom also goes hand in hand with faith, but also goes hand in hand with God, because God is the wisdom. And that means it's time for us to begin to gather together and say, you know what? I'm not fearful of this thing. I'm not going to get it. But I will tell you what I will do. I still will stay in my home, and I still will begin to maybe work for my home if it's possible for me to do, which I do. You know, uh, this next couple of weeks, that's what I'm doing today uh, with you guys, because I want to be able to gather with my family in my home, because I feel as if it's just important to do. Why? Because I love my mother. My mother's in her 70s. I don't want her to get coronavirus. You know, is it a fear thing? No. It's a wisdom thing to say, why on earth or do I need to expose myself to the public acting foolish thinking, well, it's not going to come upon me. I'm not fearful. But yet, knowing the fact that I could still maybe transfer to somebody that I love. because You know why? Because people like that don't think about other people. They're, they're too busy consumed with their own selves. And no offense, faith people, because I'm a big faith person. I'm a huge law of attraction person. But also know that if it's all about you, about you getting in public because you're not going to get it, you know, you don't stop to realize you're not acting like God at all. You're not being God. You're doing anti what God has asked you to do. And that is to start thinking about other people. Start loving other people. God so loved that He gave and that's a key thing, folks. I'm not concerned about me. I'm not going to get anything. It's not going to come by my dwelling like the Scripture says in Psalms. But I will tell you what I will do. Because I do love other people around me, I want to be able to use wisdom. Because I know wisdom will protect me. And if it protects me, it will protect them. If I use wisdom and I utilize that energy of wisdom to begin to, to, to flow in me and, throw th and flow through me, that's wisdom, folks.
So I wanted to tell you, each one of you, I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat or whatever. You know, when people try to make this uh, a political thing, I think of how foolish it is. When I hear people say, this is a ploy of the Democrats, I'm thinking, you're acting so foolish. So, so idiotic. Pardon my language, but you are. Because this is not about a political thing. This is about an attack upon planet Earth, upon humanity. And I think we've got to rise to the occasion and begin to, to find ourselves where we are literally beginning to transcend past humanity within their political parties and within the, the, the laws and, and, and the system of man and begin to transcend and realize that this is an attack upon humanity. And this is a time when we need to gather together, help one another out. And this virus will go away very quickly if we use wisdom. Stay in our homes. And you know what? Play with your children. You know, when people ask me, well, you know, this is, a, this is the ploy of the devil trying to stop me from going to work. I think to myself, how many days are you able to spend time with your children? How many days have you actually took, been, been able to take off and spend time with your children? You know what you could be doing? What if, and we'll say the what if card, what if it's a time where God is saying, hey, I'm also, through this, I can turn it around for good. Through this, why don't you stay home and focus on your children and play with your children during the day? You've got the great grace period to do that since you can't get out anyway. Why don't you focus on your family? Focus on spending time with your husband, your wife, your children. What if we did this and allow this to be turned around for our good? Are you with me? And we can attract the power of love in our family. We can attract the community and the longing that our kids need for each one of us when they want to spend time with us, but we can't because they're too busy going to work. Why don't we turn this around for our good folks? And that, to me, is what wisdom is saying. When wisdom cries out, I pay attention to it. And wisdom always loves, because wisdom's God, always loves to do what God loves to do, and that is to give our lives away to someone else and care about other people, be protective of other people and love other people. That's what wisdom is wanting us to do. So during this time of staying home, I'm not worried about it one bit. You know why? Because I can spend time with my family. I can do what I, what I need to do that is constructive that maybe I might not have time to do the rest of the year when the virus goes away. But if I do this, and if I listen to the system, and I begin to understand the wisdom, and give to where I won't give it to other people <laughs> by loving them and not the virus, and not, not giving up the virus to other people, then I can stay home and I can do what's good and healthy and right. And that is I can build up my family and spend time with those people that I love the most. So I hope you guys are having a great day today. Thank you, as always, for tuning into our podcast. I know this podcast this week was a little different because I know sometimes we like to focus on law of attraction and we like to focus on things of faith and things of uh, just spirituality. But I wanted to be able to say this today because there's such a big demand and such a big argument right now among faith people. And I think sometimes we get so carried away with just saying what is wrong with staying home. Home. It doesn't mean you're defeated. It doesn't mean you're being a wuss. It doesn't mean you're doing it. It just means you're staying home to be to play it safe. And you know what, folks? There's nothing wrong with that. To me, if you want to know the truth about it, to me, the people who feel like they have to get out to, to, to prove a point to their faith, I think those people honestly have very low self-esteem. They have very, 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 very main issues with their identity because they feel like you have to prove something. If you feel like you've got to prove something and you've got to be able to test the waters to something, you've got something wrong with you, folks. And no offense. I'm not being bad or ugly. Trust me because I love you. But you but you got something wrong with you when you've got to be able to feel like you've got to prove something. I don't have to prove anything. Anything. I don't have to test anything. I can just be me. And when you learn to love yourself, you have no issue at all with saying, hey, what's the big deal? Stay at home and enjoy it. Hey, I'm enjoying this today. <laughs> all right? So you guys have a blessed end of the day. And don't forget, as always, create the day you want. Create what it is today you can do with your family, your children, your spouse, your, your loved ones. Create the day today and make the joy just come alive for you today. God bless. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.